let's review this chapter dealing with exponential and logarithmic equations. First off, let's solve this log equation. I notice I have logs on each side, so I'm going to bring the logs from the right over to the left, and that will give me log base 2 of x plus 3 minus log base 2 of x minus 4 is equal to 3. And then, since I have a difference of two logs, I can write this as the log of their quotient, x plus 3 over x minus 4, is then equal to 3. I then don't like to have this logarithmic equation, so I'm going to switch it into an exponential equation, rewriting it as 2 to the third is equal to x plus 3 over x minus 4 and I'm going to think of that 2 to the third as 2 to the third over 1 so that I can cross multiply and solve. One diagonal is going to give me 8 times this x minus 4 which is 8x minus 32 and the other diagonal is x plus 3. If I get all the x's to the left I have 7x on the left if I add 32 to each side I have 35 on the right and so x is equal to 5. All I need to do then is check that 5 does not create the log of a negative, which it doesn't when you substitute it in. Now, let's graph this logarithmic equation. Now, let's recall what a basic log graph looks like. It has this general shape right here, and it happens to go through the point 1, 0 and through base, 1. I know I wrote kind of small there, but let's rewrite that over here. 1, 0 and base comma 1. Well for us the base is 4 so that'll become 4 comma 1. Now let's look at the different transformations we have. First we've got this x minus h or x minus 2 so h is 2 and we are moving this graph two units to the right. So let's write that down. Write 2. Each of these two points transform to 3 comma 0 and 6 comma 1. Then we have the 3 out front, which basically says this is going to be 3 times as tall. So we'll take the y coordinates and multiply by 3. And so we still have 3, 0, because 0 times 3 is 0. And the next point transforms to 6, 3, because 1 times 3 is 3. The plus 1 at the end just tells us that we're going to be moving our graph up 1 unit. So it moves these two key points to 3, 1 and 6, 4. So let's go down here and plot 3, 1 and 6, 4. Let's also look at what happens to the vertical asymptote. Normally you have a vertical asymptote that's on the y-axis. Well, our first transformation is to move it over 2. 3 times tall does not affect a vertical line, nor does the up 1. So we're going to still have now a vertical asymptote at the line x equals 2. So we can use these key points to draw our logarithmic graph. Let's graph another logarithmic problem. The base graph is going to go through 1, 0 and base, 1, which is going to be 2, 1 in this case. Next, we're going to look at the x plus 1 there, and that's going to tell us that this graph is going to shift left one unit. And so that's going to take the 1, 0 back to the origin, and it's going to take the 2, 1 left to 1, 1. We then look at the negative 2 out in front, and that basically tells us it's going to be negative 2 times as tall. I know that's kind of strange, but we'll take our y values and multiply by negative 2. We have 0, 0, and 1, negative 2. Finally, the plus 3 at the end says that we need to move our graph up 3 units, and that takes these two points to 0, 3, and 1, 1. Okay, let's plot these two points here. 0, 3 is on the y-axis, then we have 1, 1. And let's see what happens to our vertical asymptote, which is normally on the y-axis. We're moving it left 1, and the second two transformations have no effect upon it, so our vertical asymptote is going to be right there. So now we can scratch sketch in our graph and we'll find that it's going to look like this. Let's graph an exponential graph. 
Remember how an exponential graph generally has this shape here instead, and it happens to go through two key points of 0, 1 and 1, base? Well, that tells me this graph here, before we do any transformations, is going to go through 0, 1, and it would go through base, this is base 3, 1, 3 as two key points. However, that's before the shifting. I have an x plus 2 or x minus h, which tells us h is negative 2, and we're going to be shifting this left 2, which moves our two points over here to negative 2, 1, and negative 1, 3. And then that minus 1 at the end tells us we're going to move the graph down 1, and that would give us negative 2, 0, and negative 1, 2. When I take a look at these two points and plot them, negative 2, 0 is right there, and negative 1, 2 is right here. And the horizontal asymptote, which is normally on the x-axis, is down one unit, so instead it will be at this line y equals negative 1. So we can very easily sketch in this graph right here. Now, if you don't like that transformational approach, you can basically take an xy chart to this problem, but have to do the transformations. If you substitute in negative 2, you'll have 0 for an exponent. Anything to the 0 is 1. Minus 1 is 0. Similarly, negative 1 will give you an output of 2, and 0 will give you an output of 8. And you will notice that these points, other than the 0, 8, are the ones that I've plotted on this graph.